Hello everyone, my name is George Slotkovsky and today we're looking at a new update for GS Curve Tools version 1.3. This is a major update, but it is free for all the existing customers, so you just need to go to your marketplace of choice and download the latest version. After that, you just delete the old folder and basically repeat the installation steps and that's it. As always, I recommend you to finish all of your current projects before applying major updates, but it should be backwards compatible with all the previous projects as well. But just in case, finish the projects first and then update. we will start with advanced visibility. This is a new highlight mode for geometry and curves. And uh, in order to access it, you need to go to curve control window. Let's just put it over here and you will see the advanced visibility. It is um, visible even if you don't uh, select anything over here. Uh, you can open it like that and you will see that we have geometry highlight and curve highlight. So let's start from the geometry. Now, if you just select the curve in the viewport, you'll see that the curve itself is selected just like that, but you cannot see the geometry. You can, of course, enable the wireframe mode over here, shaded wireframe, but it will also enable it on all of those other cards, and you might not want that. If I disable this and just enable geometry highlight like that, only the selected card will be highlighted. This is only highlight. It's not a selection, so you still have the curve selected, but now it is much easier to see uh, what exactly you are selecting at the moment. So as you can see, I can easily spot which curves I'm selecting. And of course, you can also uh, use X-ray mode over here. I just bound it to a hotkey and enable the X-ray mode and just see exactly which curve you are working on. Now, the next highlight mode is curve highlight. You can enable it over here and what it will do, it will basically highlight the curve that you selected, but it will make it always on top and it ha also has additional options over here. So if I just select the curve right now, you'll see that it's actually uh, this nice blue gradient color over here. And if I go ahead and select something in this project over here, you will see that all of the curves that I select are now always on top and it is really easy to see what you are working on. Combined with the geometry highlight, this can be very useful. Now, what are the options for the curve highlight? So, first of all, we have CV size, selected color and deselected color. Those are for the CVs. So, if we press F8, we will go to CV mode and you will see that if I toggle the highlight mode over here, you will see that it is much easier to spot the CVs right now with this highlight mode. And also, you can increase the size of those CVs just like that and you can change its color and transparency. For example, the green over here, now my selected color, and if I select any CVs, you'll see that they are now green, and the red, of course, are the selected ones. Now, you might notice that there, uh, there is a like small circle around one of the CVs. Uh, this is actually your root CV, so this is the first CV of the curve, and it is very important uh, for some uh, functions in curve tools, so you actually need to know where it is and it is highlighted just like that and of course it, it just turns green if you select it now when you increase the cv size you do not actually increase the size of maya cvs this is just a preview so uh, if i start clicking on this preview just like that you will see that i am not able to select uh, any cvs because well maya has its own cvs and their size unfortunately is fixed but this will give you a nice highlight to indicate where cvs are so we can just box select it like that and it is much easier to spot let's just turn this down to something more reasonable like that and uh, this is the cv highlight now you can disable curve visibility the curve highlight if you want you just uh, need to toggle this button over here and you, as you can see the curve now disappears but the cvs are still there and you can just have them highlighted and that's it let's just undo this real quickly and the same thing uh, goes for curve you can just change its, its color and transparency over here also you can use hull uh, visibility. Now the hull is the line that connects CVs uh, and it can be very useful if you have the curve visibility disabled but you still want to know 
the direction of the CVs that you are working on. So for example, if I enable CVs visibility like that, F8, you'll see that it's, I kind of see where they are, but I cannot understand uh, the direction of the curve too well. And if I enable hull visibility, just like that, you'll see that they are now connected. And if I select them, the, uh, the hull is also highlighted with the selected color just like that and it's really easy to see what you're selecting right now and what you are working right now you can also enable geometry highlight if you want additional visibility just like that of course hull width will just increase the width of the line of the hull and hull color of the same just color of the line and its transparency now other options uh, we also have additional options over here lazy update is just small performance tweak if you have any issues with performance of the uh, highlight mode in the viewport you can enable this lazy update and it will increase the performance a little bit but that's actually not that noticeable so just uh, keep it off it's just for some edge cases and uh, always on top will basically disable the always on top feature now i'm not sure why would you want that because this actually defeats the purpose of this curve highlight as you can see now it's really hard to see what you're selecting over here um, without always on top but it's the, it's an option and you can turn it off if you want now distance colors distance colors are very simple it uh, calculates the distance from the camera to cv and changes its color accordingly so as you can see the closer cvs are to the camera the brighter they are and the further away the darker they are so it's just uh, to be able to really easily distinguish where are the closest cvs where are the furthest cvs and just to locate the curve in space a little bit easier because uh, let me just enable uh, disable the hull and enable the curve if i disable the curve distance color like that you'll see it's really hard to understand where the curve is in space and if i enable this simple highlight you'll see that the darker parts are actually further away from the camera and you can locate them easily just like that now the toggles are, will just enable or disable this effect for different parts of the curve now the last feature in curve highlight is cv occlusion this is uh, actually a cv and hull occlusion but uh, you'll see how it works in a second let me just select my base mesh like that and select occluder over here and it will actually add this base mesh name to this uh, field and if i enable the occlusion you will see that when I select uh, some curves and I en enable, let's just disable curve visibility and enable hull. And if I enable component mode F8, you will see now that components that are behind this occluder mesh that I've selected are now hidden. And it's a little bit easier to understand what you are looking. And if I enable uh, disable hull visibility, you'll see that now be uh, the CVs behind this mesh will be disabled and uh, basically not visible. So this is very useful. It can uh, affect performance a little bit because it needs to calculate all of the um, intersections with the mesh. But if you select a few curves at a time, like three, five, six, ten curves, it should not affect the performance too much. So uh, use it. It's very cool mode. It allows you to understand what you are selecting and the occlusion will not collide with the curves themselves, with the cards and geometry. It will only use the selected occluder over here. So this is curve highlight mode and advanced visibility. Now, you, of course, can also use hotkeys for curve highlight and, and geometry highlight. So if I press my hotkey over here that I've selected, you'll see that it will toggle the curve highlight. And if I select some curves, it will basically toggle the visibility of those curves. And of course, the hull and other components as well, based on the hotkey that I've selected. And the same goes for geometry. You can just toggle the highlight and it will just work like that now the next major feature in this update are curve layer collections so as you can see i have a new menu over here main plus and minus and if i open this menu you will now see that i have details and templates so now i have three collections that i can use and you can actually create as many collections as you want now what are those collections those collections are basically collections of layers and each collection can have its own individual layer group over here so if i switch you see that uh, it changes because uh, those layers are on different collections now those collections have additional options uh, 
So for example, uh, you can of course create a new collection. You just uh, enter a collection name. Uh, you, it needs to be unique name uh, because otherwise it will just ask you to rename the collection. You can delete the collection. Let me just do this and let's just delete this details collection, right? But you, uh, look at what, what it says. All the layers will be transferred one collection up. So when you delete the collection, the, the layers on this collection will not be deleted. It will be just transferred one layer up, up to the main group over here. So collection will disappear and all of those layers will go one index up up to main collection. And of course you cannot delete the main collection because this is the default one. Now, other options. You have clear. Now this one, this will delete all of the layers on uh, this uh, collection that you have selected right now. So be careful. It actually warns you that uh, the, all of the layers and all of the curves on those layers, of course, will be deleted. So just be careful with that, but this is a very useful feature. Now, rename is as simple as that. You can just rename my details as you can see just renames the layer collection to the name that you choose just like that very easy now copy and paste will copy all of the layers on the currently selected uh, collection and you can then paste it to any other collection you want so if i copy details over here and i will paste them to the main you will see that all of the curves will now be transferred copied and transferred to this main collection. And of course, the duplicates will be left behind in the details. So if you want that, you can, of course, do that. Let me just delete them because we do not uh, need those duplicated ones over here, just like that. And we still have those details over here. Now, the next feature is merge up, move up, merge down and move down. The, those are pretty self-explanatory. Merge up will merge the current layer collection to the one above it. And merge down will merge the current layer collection with one just below it. Of course, if there is one. Uh, the same thing for move up, move down. It will just reorder this list of collection. This is just a little bit for organization purposes. You can just move down, move up and uh, basically reorder them as you wish. So other feature for layer collections that can be very useful if you work on separate zones on your project, for example, beard, brows, some complex braids uh, and uh, the, like base uh, layer and uh, other layers. As you can see, I have main and details over here. It's very nice to be able to quickly distinguish between those collections. So what we have is curve. Uh, if you hold right click on the curve filter over here, auto hide curves on inactive collections. So if you click that, you will see that some of the curves disappeared. That's because they are on other collection other than this main collection. And if I change this uh, layer collection or just use my mouse wheel to scroll them, you'll see that now it will aut automatically show and hide curves on different collections. And of course my templates collection over here. So just like that, you can quickly switch between collections using mouse wheel. Now, another useful feature of layer collection is actually connected to import and export curves. You will see here that we have import into a new collection if I enable this thing. And then I will try to import something. For example, let's just import my templates from the previous project, just like that. You will see that we have created a new collection automatically imported curves. That is a fixed name for this collection and our new import is now in this layer J over here. And let me just find it. And here it is. Uh, yes, here it is. So those are imported curves over here and they are now on the separate collection. So it's really easy to distinguish them for, from any other curves that are in this current project. And they will be imported in this collection um, all the time if you have this option enabled. If you have this option disabled, it will just merge the imported curves to the main collection and that can be very disorienting if you're importing a lot of uh, curves in the project. Now, how do you use layer filters with layer collections and how do they work? So, uh, layer filters by default will only work on the current layer collection. So, if I try to hide all of the uh, components, all of the layers in this main collection, as you can see, other layer collections are still visible. But if you want to override that and basically hide everything or show everything, you just hold control and it will hide or show everything 
um, on all of the collections. The same goes for Curve and Geo. Just hold Control and with combinations of clicking like that, it will basically affect all of the layer collections. Now you might notice that I have this additional layer over here, templates, and I actually store all of my template curve on that layer. It's just easy to hold them there because I do not want them to be visible all the time. I just want to have them if I want to pick some of the special cards I have over here or tubes and just place it on my main project. But if I want to hide them, I, I just hide them over here, of course, and they will be hidden. Unfortunately, if you try to use layer filters right now, they will actually show everything, in, including the templates. So you can go to options and enable this ignore template collection names option over here. And now if I go to templates and I basically hide all of the templates like that, they will not be affected by filters anymore. As you can see, I'm toggling the filters and I'm holding control to affect all of the collections, but the template collection are now hidden all the time and I just need to go manually and hide them just like that if I need them. This is very useful just to for a faster workflow. Now another small note about the ignoring the template collection names. Before you had an option to ignore last layer and it is still enabled by default. So if you have your templates on the uh, last layer, let's just move uh, these templates to last layer over here. And if you hide it and then you try to hide or unhide curves, you, you'll see that the last layer is still ignored. Now, if you are using templates collection over here, you can safely uh, disable this option over here and this layer will be fully functional and it will be uh, hidden and revealed just like all other layers. But uh, and this is very useful if you actually use templates because this is a better option to store those templates. Now, when you use ignore template collection names or ignore last layer, it will actually ignore uh, the template collection over here or this last layer in the collection when you use extract all. So for example, look at this. I have my two collections and I have my templates over here. Let, let me just even unhide them. And let's just extract all. You will see it extracts all of the geometry from all of the layers except for templates. So this is a very useful feature if you want to ignore the templates uh, completely just for them not to be exported when you um, want to extract all. Now there is another option available, group template collection together. Uh, if you have this option enabled and you are using regroup by layers, all of the collections with template in their name will be actually grouped into one special group in the outliner. So let me just enable the color mode and regroup everything. You will see that I have my main collection over here, my main curves, because this is the name of this collection, and details collection over here. As you can see, they are grouped nicely together. And I have CT templates group over here. And all of the curves from all of the layers on template collections are now in a single group. This is very useful because you do not want them on a like 25 groups over here, even if you split them into multiple layers, they will still be grouped as one template group in the outliner. Now, of course, if you do not want to use templates, you simply merge everything together and let's regroup this by layer just like that. And now we go to options and basically show layer collections menu disabled. And as you can see, it's now hidden. It will not take additional space and if you do not want to use collections, you can just ignore them. Now, the number of active layers on each collection can be changed in the options. And before you had option to uh, change this number of active layers up to 40, but now I've expanded it and you can actually use up to 80. It looks a little bit ridiculous, but I assure you that some people actually need this many layers on a very, very complex project. I hope that they will use my, uh, layer collections to organize uh, their layers a little bit better, but they can also use up to 80 layers now. Uh, there is a new mode available for extract all. You can now hold control and if you do that, let me just demonstrate, I'm holding control and I'm clicking on extract all. What it will do it will basically open the export window automatically where you can 
export your geometry that you just extracted. It will export it, it will delete the extracted geometry and it will return it back to where you started so you can continue your work. And uh, the geometry is now exported and ready to be checked in the Marmoset toolbag or in the engine that you are working with. So this is a very nice and easy and fast option. You just hold control, you click on extract all or the same goes for extract selected. You hold control, select some curves, extract, it will open a window, you export it and it's now back where you started. You can, you can continue working. Now there is a new and updated color mode. So let me just merge those two layer collections together just for easier navigation over here. Uh, if I enable color mode now, you will see that now the color mode supports transparency. It will take the alpha map of your texture and it will basically colorize the, the diffuse map just like that. And the coolest part is that you can have this color mode enable all the time and basically work on your curves. As you can see, I, I'm duplic duplicating those cards and color mode is still on and everything works. I can just take those cards and, for example, use fill to fill between um, those cards and you will see that color mode will not be turned off. Uh, it will be automatically turned off and on if you try to extract something because you actually want to extract the, without this color mode. But for every other function, it uh, works seamlessly. And of course, if you disable it, you can uh, just return back to the original texture, just like that. Now, all the options that you have with color mode before, they are still available. Let me just enable it again and we'll go to options and Let's see, uh, sync co curve color to layer color is still available. Colorized regrouped layers will be colorized the regrouped layers in the outliner and color only effects diffuse. This is actually the toggle that makes it transparent. You can disable it and you will see that it is back to the original look of the layer colors. And you can also enable check checker pa pattern for color mode. And of course, the transparency will still be there. So you can check your UVs really quickly like that. Maybe something got corrupted and like that. And you can just disable the diffuse to have checker on the cards themselves, not just the visible parts. Now the next feature is dynamic divisions. So let me just take one of the templates over here just for demonstration purposes. And let's uh, enable the default shader like that. So as you can see, we have a bunch of divisions over here. And if we look at the curve control window over here, we have a new switch over here, auto. If I disable it, as you can see, it's changed a little bit, but now it's it will behave just like before. And if you now try to deform this geometry using the curve, you will see that it actually deforms, but it stays with the same subdivision level as it was before, no matter the length of the curve. Now, if you, now let's return back. If you enable auto mode, now this slider works as a density slider. And if you try to deform the geometry now, you will see that it will automatically update the divisions of the curve. So this makes it very easy to set and forget um, the amount of divisions you want, the density of the curve you want, and then just enable this auto mode and it will try to keep this density no matter the length of the curve. As you can see, I'm going pretty ridiculous over here, but the density is still the same and you can control it with this slider. This also works on other types of curves, except for bound geometry, of course, because bound geometry does not have divisions at all. Its divisions is based on the original geometry or original curves that you're actually bound to it. But other like tubes and warp tubes and extrude as well, they all have dynamic divisions since this update. You just need to enable it. Now with the introduction of layer collections and even more layers on each collection over here, 80 up to 80 layers, you might think that now this will be even worse because as you remember before this update, there were all of those layers that basically mirrored the GS Curve Tools layers over here, they, are, they were mirrored in the display layers over here. Now this was fixed, they are now hidden. There will be no additional layers in the display layers window in the channel box, but they are still there, they're just hidden. You can just go to Windows 
uh, relationship editors and display layers over here. Relationship editors, editor, display layers. And as you can see, you still have all of the layers over here and all of the components of those layers still there. If you need those layers for some reason, they're here, they're just hidden. Now you can also convert old layer system to the new layer system. Just go to options, other options, convert to a new layer system. And if, if even if you have old project, it will basically convert and clean up the display layer um, window over here. So you can have actually useful information here. Now exporting and importing curve was changed a little bit. If I just select this course over here and I click export over here, you will see that now file type is dot curves. You can of course change it back to Maya ASCII, but you can also use this custom format just to export it and just to be able to distinguish the exported uh, curves from other Maya files very easily. As you can see, it has dot curves now over here and you can easily see it. And if you switch to Maya ASCII, it will disappear, but uh, it will show all of the other Maya files. And this can be a little bit confusing. Same goes for import curves. It will by default choose the dot curves format, but of course you can still import old Maya ASCII files. Now the hotkeys were changed a little bit. Now if I hold Control and Alt, and I already have my curve, uh, curves hidden, you'll see that it will also toggle the visibility of the geometry component. So you can now control it a little bit better. And the old hotkey for um, always on top was Control Alt, but now it's changed to Control Alt and Shift. And if you enable curves and try to enable always on top like that, this is the old uh, advanced visibility mode. Uh, you can just do this, but you need to hold Control, Shift and Alt at the same time to do that. Now, Cart to Curve was reworked completely. If you click on this button, you will open uh, the new window, Cart to Curve, and you will see that there are actually a bunch of options available. So before it was just converting the geometry to a uh, NURBS curve, and then you could do anything you want to it, but now it will actually convert geometry to cards and you can do warp cards or extrude cards you can also ma match attributes you can enable additional options over here like vertical and horizontal flip of the uvs and you can also reverse curve if you need that because some of the conversions actually need this option enabled or disabled that's that is based on the uh, orientation of the mesh and uh, other factors. So you have this option over here. So let's just uh, test it really quickly. So I've hidden everything uh, except for the base layer of the hair, just like that. And let me just select it and really quickly extract it just to have the geometry to test uh, this new mode. And let's just hide it over here. So now we have all of those individual cards like that is, as you can see, they are here. And now let's just select everything and convert selected. And what it will do, this is just a regular geometry. It's not procedural. It's, it doesn't have any parameters. You can just import uh, this geometry from any other package. Not, now, what it will try to do, it will try to reconstruct the geometry, uh, the procedural cards based on that original geometry. Now, this, is, this can be extremely useful if you already have some kind of uh, hair cards going over here but you still do not use uh, the Curve Tools procedural cards and you actually want to convert them. Of course, this process is not perfect because uh, it cannot match it perfectly, but it still tries to do the best that it can. And of course you can, since this um, is actually a procedural geometry, you can just go ahead and change the parameters to what you see fit after you converted it. So by default, it matches the orientation with taper twist profile uh, and copies the materials and tries to copy the UVs. Now UVs should be uh, very simple UVs just like you um, use for hair cards like that, just a rectangular UV. If you have some uh, very crazy um, UV setup, it will of course not copy it. It will try to, but it will not match it perfectly. Of course, all of other options are also available, like vertical, vertical or horizontal flip, if you need that. It will basically flip the UV map uh, when you enable or disable it. Reverse curve, as I, as I already said, changes the root position on the converted cards, because sometimes it is needed. So this is a very interesting option. Uh, it still has a little bit of issue if the card has 
a crazy like profile like that for example over here or something like that it will not capture these parts over here because it, it it cannot see them but if the card is somewhat simple like that it will convert it to the procedural geometry and you can then just use it and use the layer system and everything else just like with normal cards so now you can use copy and paste instead of just transferring attributes like you could before so before you needed to actually select in the right order and then click transfer attributes and uh, it would transfer attributes uh, right now the attributes are the same so you cannot see so let's just transfer uvs for example and as you can see i've selected this card first and selected all of the other cards after that and it transferred from the first selected to all of the others just like that but for example right now you can just select one card you can go and click and hold right click on the co and press copy uvs over here as you can see copy it and you can just after that select whatever you want to select and then just for example um, go over here and paste it as you can see it now transferred the uvs from this curve to uh, all of the other selected curves same goes for attribute transfer so let me just add some twist over here just like that and i will go ahead and copy the parameters over here and paste them to all of the other cards just like that if i increase the resolution and increase the profile copy paste and as you can see everything was copied and pasted the other useful feature of the copy and paste and transfer that was added is actually a filter now if we go here and click on this button over here you'll see that we have all of those switches that we can use and based on them if they are disabled or enabled those attributes will be copied and pasted or ignored for example by default it actually ignores orientation so if i uh, reset this for example to let me just take some card like that and copy and paste if i for example take and change the orientation of this first card like that let me just enable default color just for you to be able to see cl more clearly i will just copy it and paste it you will see that orientation will not be pasted because it's actually very very destructive if you try to copy and paste some attributes but you actually also copy the orientation so now you can filter out any, any attributes that you need from this window and they will not be copied orientation is disabled by default but you can also disable anything that you want uh, this also works on transfer attributes as well as copy attri and paste attributes so those filters are universal now transfer attributes and transfer uvs was also improved for bound objects for example if you want to transfer uvs from uh, this card over here to uh, this bound object over here as you can see it has multiple cards attached to one curve you can just now select the normal curve copy uvs and paste the uvs just like that and as you can see it now changes the uvs of all of the cards that are bound to this curve so before you had to go and manually change those uvs using edit original objects right now it will basically just uh, paste them to this uh, object over here and if you have for example let's just paste it over here if you have the exactly the same bound object over here and you will try to transfer uvs from this bound object to this bound object it will detect that they are the same and it will transfer all of the individual cards so you can have uh, different uvs on each of the attached card and it will try to replicate the same thing over here so copy uvs and paste, paste uvs you'll see that they are now absolutely identical because they have the same number of attached cards and the uvs were copied in the correct order now we also have a new randomize mode let's just disable this and select everything over here and for better visi visibility let's enable advanced visibility like that as you can see we have a lot of curves selected and let's go to randomize and as you can see on the bottom over here we have additional randomization option that is selection if i enable this and start dragging 
you will see that it actually randomizes from the original selection based on the slider the percentage of the selected curves. For example, the low value over here will be sele selecting only a very, very small amount of curves, as you can see. The zero actually will select everything, but very small amounts over here will select just a few curves. And as you go up with this slider, it will select more and more randomly selected curves based on your original selection. And you just you will just be able to use it to transfer some random attributes, to transfer some UVs and stuff like that if you need that. Of course, it works just like all of the other randomized curves. Because this slider is just a preview of how many curves you want selected. So you choose the selection amount like that. You click randomize and you get that selection to you. So this is just a preview and it's based on the currently selected curves. As you can see now, I have less curves selected, so it has less curves to choose from when randomizing the selection. But of course, you can just select everything again and randomize again and click randomize and it will randomize your selection. Now, if you have bound objects, you sometimes want to change some options from those bound objects. For example, uh, the divisions on the curves. So let me just duplicate this bound object over here. It consists of multiple cars, as you can see, but they are all attached to one curve like that. So if I want to change the divisions of those original cars, before you had to go to edit original objects or try to find those original curves over here and select them and change the divisions like that. But now you can just select the new bound curve like that and select all original curves over here. It will automatically find those curves for you and you can now change the divisions. Also other options as well. Those might be a little bit less useful, but you can still twist and or change orientation if you want and it will change it only on the original curves. Now you just can reselect the, this curve and as you can see it has its own orientation and stuff, but you can switch to original curves as well. Now you might notice that there are some sliders missing over here. If I open other, you will see that now we have refine and smooth over here and they are grayed out because by default, the automatic mode will be enabled. So you do not need to touch this refine mode, um, hopefully ever again. But if you have some uh, issues with it, you can just enable auto refine and just change this slider to whichever value you want. But by default, just use the auto refine mode and it should work just fine. Now also sampling accuracy was added as an alternative over here. So why do you need actually this refine mode? Let me just simplify this curve to only four CVs like that. And let's just start to deform it. Let me just rebuild it to something very, very simple. Start to deform it. And as I deform it like that, you will see and increase the divisions. You will see that I start to get some deformations over here. And you might not want that. This will only happen on a very, very small resolution curves like that, like four or maybe five CVs, not more. Now, if I just increase the sampling uh, accuracy a little bit, you will see that the more I increase it, the more precise the geometry is fitted to the curve. Now, the same uh, effect can be achieved with this refined value. As you can see, you can just use it. But uh, I think that it is better to use sampling accuracy just because it will change based on the resolution of the curves. You only need to use it on a very, very low resolution curves. As you can see, if I increase the resolution just a little bit to five, for example. You see, even with automatic mode and sampling accuracy of 0.33, the default one, I do not have any issues with the geometry, even on highest divisions, just like that. You do not need to change the slider at all. But if you are using very, 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 very small amounts of CVs, you will see that I actually notice some deformations over here. I can increase the sampling rate a little bit and fix those deformations. Now, why this was done? Because if you have the sampling accuracy or the refined value a little bit too high, it will decrease the performance of the curve. It will be much more laggy and sluggish in the viewport. We do not want that. So just play with this value if you need. Enable or disable refine mode and try to keep the curve 
resolution to uh, something like 5 or 4. It's the best value that you can use. Now some changes to the UV editor window. If I open it right now and I have all of these cards selected over here and tubes as well, you will see that now we have some additional options over here. So as you can see, we have sync selection and randomize. A sync selection is very straightforward. You just select something in the viewport of the UV editor. You click on sync selection and all of those cards in the viewport with this UV selected over here will be automatically selected. And as I, if I, for example, select these ones and sync selection, you'll see that I now have those selected over here. Let me just enable geometry highlight just to be able to see what I actually select just like that. And I select this. I select those two cards, sync selection, and as you can see, only those cards are now selected. Now, the other option over here is randomize. Let's just select those again, and let's disable curve highlight, uh, the geometry highlight, I mean. And let's see, randomize. So if I select all of those cards and click randomize, you will see that in the viewport, they will change. So I can randomize UVs, but the cool part is let me just change it uh, and copy some UVs. Now you will see that I have three groups of UVs available right now. And if I sync selection like that, you will see that we have a bunch of cards on this UV position and just the two cards on this UV position. So now if I go ahead and randomize the UVs like that, you will see that the relative the density will stay the same so i still have only two cars over here but they will be randomized in the viewport if i continue clicking like that but now if i want to completely randomize this selection i will just hold shift and now they will be completely randomized between those three positions just like that and if i just click this it's like that the density will not change so the, those are two modes for the randomize so another thing, now you have a new option. You can now change editor colors as well as UV colors over here. So for example, if I select this one and I want to change the outline of deselect, I will just go over here and I will change outline to something like yellow. And now, as you can see, deselected UVs will have yellow outline. And if I want the, the selected ones to be this color, I will just change it to this color just like that and of course it will be saved in the global preset so you can just uh, use it, those colors in any project you want the third one is the highlight if i change it to something else you will see that the curve will have this tint inside based on this the third color and of course if you hover over them you will see the names of the parameters that they, they change another mode is alpha only mode you can now just uh, look at the alpha over here without of course changing anything with the cars themselves if you enable alpha only mode you will see that now you have this mode it's much easier to see and it's much much easier to set up the uvs in this alpha mode so this can be very useful if you have dark background and of course transparency mode is still available as well you can just enable the transparency if you want but i prefer to use alpha mode since i've added this option because it's really easy to see what you are doing now to the other minor changes the options menu was redesigned a little bit just to have uh, separate groups for separate options like that and also now you have flip uvs before bind over here of course uh, this helps with more consistent binding to a curve so for example let me just smooth this curve a little bit and as you can see now, I have arrows on the left like that on and facing bottom over here. If I bind this to this card over here, you'll see that they are still just like the, they were before. But if I disable this option over here, it will not flip the UVs before bind. And you will see that, first of all, it will rotate the card, of course, but also it will change the... Uh, UVs a little bit and uh, it basically mirrors them and it's not very useful so let's just undo this as you can see and redo mine again you will see that it will not be consistent and if I enable it will be more consistent now the rebuild curve now has two additional buttons over here uh, this will basically rebuild 
selected curve to this selected value. So by default, if you just uh, slide, uh, use the slider without selecting anything, it will not re uh, rebuild anything. But now you can just set the slider, for example, to 20. And if you just rebuild it to this value, as you can see, it will rebuild to 20. Uh, and you can, of course, still dynamically rebuild it using the slider. Uh, this one, this button will just reset this slider range to the default one. Now there is a new hotkey available that is called delete curves. As you can see, I have it on Alt X over here. This is a very useful hotkey because now you can just use Alt D, for example, to duplicate something. I use Alt D right now and it will duplicate them perfectly. And now you can use Alt X and of course it's anything you want. You can uh, put any uh, hotkey you want here to quickly delete those cards just like that just by selecting the curve and pressing the correct hotkey and of course duplicate them like that delete duplicate delete very useful very fast use this hotkey instead of trying to delete it manually in the outliner or anything else now this is it for this update i hope you will enjoy using all of those features i'm sure uh, you will find a lot of uses for them uh, and I think especially the color mode and layer collections will be very popular, but also other things as well. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, just don't forget to like it and share with your friends if you if they actually work with hair cards. And if you have any issues using this tool, don't forget to uh, contact me using all the contact information I have in the tool itself and of course the website and stuff like that. Mm, and yeah, uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.